Hey guys, and welcome back to the JTO channel. And this is your match preview of Malmo versus Chelsea in the Champions League. Tomorrow, the boys go to Sweden, or shall I say tonight they do. And obviously, um, we face them at 5.45, one of them early Champions League kickoffs that they do in the group stages. It's normally like one game or two games in the Tuesday and Wednesday matches. So, yeah, we'll go do it tomorrow. Obviously, like I said last time, we beat them 4-0. So, um, should be optimistic for this game. It should be another... Um, I want to say cakewalk, but to be fair, you know, when you go to these European away trips, um, you know, maybe the atmosphere can be loud, they'll be up for it. I mean, Juve went there 1-3-0, so, and they're not in good form, so I don't really expect us to go there and not perform tomorrow. Um, just go there, get the job done, get three points, and um, we head back home and hopefully, uh, you know, we get through in these group stages, which I think we will. Obviously... Um, first thing I want to talk about is Thomas Tuchel's press conference, just briefly. Um, obviously, firstly, he talked about Billy Gilmore, um, talked about how they're going to decide whether they're going to bring him back in January or not. Now, obviously, he said it's too early to say. Uh, we've just hit November. There's still many uh, months to go for him to still get his opportunity and see if he can show his qualities to help this Norwich team. Look, in my opinion, Norwich, I mean... The way Daniel Farkas has treated Gilmore recently, not it for me. Um, I thought it would have been a good loan move, but it just hasn't been. Norwich are the worst team in the league. Billy Gilmore's not going to be able to showcase his qualities there. And even if he does, they're not going to get recognised because Norwich are going to lose every game. So that's what it is what it is in terms of that. For me, you should bring him back and maybe loan him to another top club. Or maybe keep him because I know the fixture congestion um, in Jan is going to be mad with the Club World Cup if we make the League Cup semi-final. You know, the league as well, with AFCON there as well. So, look, we'll see in terms of Billy Gilmore. I know Tuchel said how he's happy to be at Chelsea, how he felt like, you know, this is the right fit for him. He feels like he's appreciated and he's happy here. And, you know, that's good to see and that's good to hear because obviously Thomas Tuchel, I think, is a special man. Um, a special manager that is sort of a gem in a way because I just think, I think in order for him to build up his credibility, I've always thought that he needed to go to a top club. Obviously, look, Dortmund is, they are a good side, but they're not the best side in Germany. They never have, and they probably never will be in a lot of years to come with the way Bayern are going right now. Look, PSG, you're expected to win the league there every year. You're expected to win cups. It really was a Champions League. And to be honest, even then, look, he was the first ever manager to get them to a Champions League final. But people didn't really want to... Give him credit for that because it was the Farmers League, it's the French League, oh, it's only the French League, he, he's supposed to do that every year and stuff like that, but it is what it is. Let's, let's see how Poch does, isn't it? So, you get me. Um, but yeah, obviously, um, he did say other things, go check it out, it's on Chelsea's uh, YouTube channel, and obviously Ben Chilwell did one as well. Um, yeah, some interesting things that they both said, but obviously the main thing that I did want to talk about was obviously team news. Now, obviously, Mason Mount is not back with the team. Um, unfortunately, he hasn't still recovered from his illness, so he didn't train today. So he will not travel um, to... I thought there was something bothering me down there. Sorry, but yeah, Mason Mount will not travel with the squad tomorrow. Um, like I said, he's still feeling a bit ill. He's still feeling maybe the side effects from his illness. So look, fair enough. Um, it makes my team selection easier. Obviously, Timo is still out. Romelu's still out, Kova's still out, we're hoping they're back after the international break with two hamstring injuries and an ankle injury that they have to recover from, so um, hopefully they get speedy recovery. Same with Mason Mount, I hope he's back for Burnley this weekend. Christian Pulisic, now, obviously Thomas Tuchel said in his last press conference that um, Christian Pulisic is obviously back training with the team, but it's too early um, and they said he hopes to get him minutes against Burnley if everything goes well. It looks like so far things have gone more to the point where he's actually with the squad for tomorrow's game. I actually didn't expect that. I didn't expect him to travel with the team to go to to Sweden, but he is traveling. I think maybe that was due to the fact that Mason Mount is ill. And to be honest, if you saw a bench against um, Newcastle, I mean, boy, oh boy, it was like when you've got that many players out, your squad is set to weaken, in it? But that bench against Newcastle wasn't great. And Tuchel's like, I can't have a bench like that again. i got to have some sort of attacking quality, seen as Mason Mount's out, Timo's out, and Lukaku's out. So I think that's why he's decided to bring Christian it, um, through and maybe give him minutes tomorrow. There's five subs that we can use in Champions League, so hopefully maybe Christian Pulisic can, you know, maybe get 10-15. I don't want him maybe to come with half an hour to go. I don't know. But hopefully he does get some minutes tomorrow. But... um. 
yeah i don't think he will start he literally just came back recently so yeah and that's really on team news like i said pulisic back um and he's traveling with the squad which people didn't expect but in a way i'm not surprised because our attacking options are literally limited and i think you know who's going to be the front three of this game so um yeah, speaking of it, let's just go into the lineup prediction and who I think Thomas Tuchel will play. So, in goal, Edouard Mendy. Lem continue doing his thing. Um, yeah, I know people have been talking about Ramsdale and that being a better goalkeeper than him. Relax yourself, all right? Chill out. Let, him, let, let me see Ramsdale do it for a whole year at Arsenal. Yeah, just like Mendy has for a whole year at Chelsea, and then we can speak in it. That's all I'm going to say. Although, I will say Ramsdale's kicking his mad, but that's not the point of this video. Mendy in goal, the beast. We move on to the back three. Now, obviously, the last time the back three against Newcastle was Rudiger, Chris and Thiago Silva. I think things are going to slightly change here. I think Rudiger is going to be left side of centre-back. I think Christensen is going to be the middle centre-back. And I actually think Aspilicueta is going to be the right side of centre-back. I think Aspi comes back into the team, gets some minutes. He hasn't played in a while. Obviously, he didn't play against Newcastle. He didn't play against Southampton. Um, did he play against Norwich? I don't think he, he hasn't played in three games, Aspilicueta. So, I want him to get some minutes in, captain, and uh, yeah, get him in. Aspilicueta as the right side of the centre-back. Thiago Silva giving that rest, getting ready for Burnley on the weekend. And yeah, simple as that. Move on to the wing-backs. Reese James, for me, keeps his place after his brilliant performance, um, especially in that in those last 30 minutes against um, Newcastle with his two goals. And I know it's too cool. And obviously, Chilwell as the left wing-back, as I predict, in my opinion. And obviously, Tuchel said that because he was asked the question about how um, are you concerned maybe about the fact that Obviously, we've scored 26 goals this season, and that's ex excluding own goals and, I think, penalties. So, obviously, excluding those two, we have scored 26 goals this season, and 14 of them have come from defenders, and the, or 13 maybe. And he said, are you concerned about that and stuff like that? And look, Thomas Tuchel said it's good to get goals from the whole team. That's what he wants to see. Um, he would like his attackers, though, to chip in a bit, because at the end of the day, that's their responsibility. But then he started saying, like, Chilwell and Reese James in their roles and the way I like to use them, they're not really they're not really defenders. They're actually just midfielders. And you know what? Recently with the tactical adjustment that he has made since the Brentford game, I would say, or shall I say the Malmo game, with using Aspiliqueta, Reese James, Ben Chilwell as inverted I just call it inverted wing backs. So pretty much as midfielders. A bit how, how like Pep uses Cancelo and Walker. You know, they don't overlap, they're mainly inverted and they're midfielders, not really fullbacks. So I can see why he said that. And really, we just have the three centre backs. So, pretty much, the way we shape up in Tuchel's head is we have the three centre backs, we've got Reese James and Ben Chilwell tucked into midfield with a Jorginho there, and then maybe whoever the other midfielder is, whether it's Kante, Jorgi Kante. Um, Ruben off his cheek, uh, Kovacic, you know, to drive forward with the ball to join the front three. And it's like a 3-3-1-3 three, three, three in a way, if, if if that's how I'm seeing it, in terms of Tuchel saying that the wing-backs are literally midfielders and they're not really defenders, hence why they're getting the goals because of tactical adjustments and stuff like that. And to be honest, I like the tactic in it. It's a new way of playing. Um, Thomas Tuchel showing that he is adaptable. It's funny how he started using that tactic straight after we lost Man to Man City and to Juventus. And the fact that people didn't think the Southampton performance wasn't great. So look... I think it's a it's a great tactic, and I think it's actually made us perform even better. I've, I've actually seen better performances from us this season. So yeah, fair play to Tuchel in terms of that tactical adjustment. I feel like Reese James and Ben Chilwell as wing backs as a pairing, it's a very good pairing, and it's working well. They're both mobile, they're both quick, they can both strike the ball well, and yeah, I just think that they suit what Tuchel wants to do as them inverted fullbacks, as Aspilicueta playing as a right wing back or Marcus Alonso playing as a left wing back. Just my opinion. Anyway, we move on to the double pivot. In my opinion, look, um, I think Jorginho gets a start, um, covers out, and I don't see why we shouldn't play Jorginho. Play him 60 minutes, bring him off. I think, once again, we should be able to end this game in 60 minutes, just like we did at Stamford Bridge. So, so then we have the license to bring players off. And the other player to start alongside him is N'Golo Kante. Um... I know people might say Ruben off this cheek. I wouldn't mind a Jorginho Ruben partnership. I wouldn't mind a Kante Ruben partnership. It wouldn't surprise me. I just think me personally, I think he's gonna go with the same two. Um, at the end of the day, people may think, oh, that's defensive. Oh, we don't need Kante against Malmo. Well, to be fair, as a pairing, it worked against Malmo at home. So 
I don't know. And the fact that it's away as well, maybe it's hostile in Sweden, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a nice little ground where the fan base ain't loud and, and that, you know. To be honest, we're not going to Russia or or, or flipping, I don't know, um, Romania or something like that. I, <laughs> I don't know, innit? So, who knows? But I think, in my opinion, he'll play Kante and Jorginho, give them minutes, um, and then maybe bring one of them off and bring the likes of Ruben Loftus-Cheek on and Saul to give them minutes. Maybe give Saul a game. I don't know. Who knows? But in my opinion, Kante and Jorginho. And then we move on to the front three. Um, left wing, Callum hudson Look, people didn't say he was great against Newcastle. I thought he was all right. I thought he had a good performance considering he had two... V, um, he had to deal with two players pretty much all the time because Chilwell's role, obviously, of recent times, tactical adjustments has been a lot different. Same with Reese James down that side. Um, gets another opportunity tomorrow. Um, I hope he scores tomorrow. Hopefully, he gets a, another good performance in the tank. Goes at players, creates chances because I'm really happy that Callum and Sundo is getting these runs of games. And I know Callum was asked, um, Callum was asked about um, by a reporter, by a journalist. To Tuku and Tuku just simply said, Look, we needed him for this season. He is a part of the puzzle that we're trying to build. He is a part of the team that I'm trying to build as well. And look, he, he did say, I saw a couple of quotes saying that, look, um, playing at right wing back, yes, he's had to sort of sacrifice himself and for the team. And he said maybe it's harsh that I've had to do that to him. And it shows that Tuku does know what Hudson Doy's best position is. I just think the reason why he plays in my right wing back is because I think he has certain characteristics that Pulisic doesn't have, for example, or Hakim Ziyech or Havertz have that, you know, um, it's just better for Callum to play there. For example, like, defensively, Cho's actually improved a lot playing in that position, and that's at least the good side of it. At least he has more defensive discipline, I'll say that, because everyone's got to have a bit of defensive discipline, do you understand? Um, the fact that he's got pace, he's very quick, especially for the wing-back position. The way he's just body-built, you know, it's different to a Christian Pulisic who is quick, but he ain't Kalamut on the door quick. They're quick in different ways. And the way Cho is built and the way he is as a player just suits him more as a right wing-back, at least, out of the attackers anyway. And at the end of the day, he can cross a ball as well. He can cross a ball very good. We've known this since the Sarvi days. So, yeah, it's as simple as that. But he gets another chance at left wing tomorrow. I heard that this is the first time in his Chelsea career he's actually gotten a consecutive run of games starting, especially at left wing. And I thought to myself, that is actually mad, bro. That's actually crazy. It just shows how, for me, badly treated Hudson Odoi has been, even by Tuchel. I don't, I don't think Tuchel's treated him the best at times. Same with Lampard, same with Sarri. And um, I'm happy for him and he's been performing well and hopefully he continues on to this game and hopefully at Burnley as well. Obviously, we move on to the right-hand side, Hakim Ziyech. People say he wasn't great against Newcastle. I disagree. I thought he tried, but the execution was wrong. So pretty much he had the right ideas, wrong execution. Simple as that. I thought he didn't play badly. Um, look, there are always pros with cons and Ziyech. He's a lightweight. He's one-dimensional. And, and people say it to the point where they think he's not even a good player at all. Like... I raise Ziyech in it and I like him, but maybe the system just doesn't suit him at the end of the day. Maybe he'd cook at a Milan. I watched Milan last night. He'd definitely cook in that team. I know that for sure. With the way they play, Ziyech would love to be in the team like that. So, yeah, um, it is what it is. He has to fill in. We've got injuries and Pulisic just came back. He, he isn't going to start and play 60 minutes, is he? So Ziyech has to start. Simple. And up top, Kai Havertz, because Timo Verne ain't here. Romelu Lukaku ain't here. And like I said, you ain't starting Christian Pulisic straight away. You're probably bringing him off the bench at the very best. So, yeah, that is my team. Only changes I made. It's pretty much the same team from uh, the team that played against Newcastle, except I've dropped Thiago Zou and put Aspilicueta in. Um, he's got to think about the squad. He could make more changes. I don't think he wants to disrupt though, the chemistry of the team. I think he's going to make subtle changes. I think maybe one at centre-back. I think he could make one at midfield and play um, Kante and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I don't see him changing the front three either. And I don't see him changing the wing backs either. I can only see changes at centre back and midfield. And yeah, that's my preview, guys. Tell me your thoughts on Christian Pulisic being able to travel the squad. Mason Mount still being out due to not recovering from illness. Obviously, Timo, Lukaku, Kovacic out. Um, tell me your lineup prediction. Tell me your score prediction. Mine is a 3 0 Chelsea win. I'm going with Hakim Ziyech to score first. And I'm hoping he cooks tomorrow. I know in Champions League nights, he's normally good. Although for Chelsea, Probably except for the Atletico Madrid game. It hasn't worked out quite well, has it? So, yeah, guys. Um, I'm going to release another video today. 
about um, Antonio Conte and the fact that he's going to Spurs. And I'm going to give my thoughts on it and say why this could actually work, but why I actually couldn't as well. So, yeah, guys, tune in for that later tonight. This is going to go out midday, maybe before six. I don't know when it's not up to me. But, yeah, guys, I'll see you lot then. Peace. Obviously, I've got my match review and my play ratings video tomorrow. So, yeah. Bye. <laughs>